Welcome, everybody, back to my Homestuck Let's Read. Uh, sorry it was later today. I've been... I've been all over... Scrambling all over the dang place. This is the first day I've had a chance to really go grocery shopping, so it was a little bit later <clears throat> today. I apologize for that. But we're back in Homestuck. Glad to be back. We're starting on, what is it, page 1943. So we've got... Uh, we're going to... Oh boy, we're not even we're not even a quarter of the way done with this yet, are we? It's very hot. I just made tea, also because I'm still trying to get over something. <coughs> Mostly a sore throat. But anyway, we're back in Homestuck. So, shall we get right into it? I think we shall. Let me just double check, make sure everything's okay. Hello, Serena. How are you doing today? Do I have any in my mini feed? I don't know if I do actually. Uh, Tressa followed me a while back. Thank you, Tressa. All right. Let's get back into the read. Now that I'm settled down, I have water, I have tea in about probably 30 minutes. Let's get into it. The War Weary calls another broken planet home. Another cloth his garb, land in rage, uh, rags, fit for the wayward. A villain becomes a vagabond. The recent past is recalled. <clears throat> well, that's rough. Practice exams. Oh, thank you for following, by the way, Serena. Uh, let's see. The reason passes for call, right? Boy, howdy. An accursed mascot is located among fallen brethren. Its visage reviled. Greasy Pete's. A rag of souls drifts from the heavens. Its owner, a mystery. A boy finds a dead friend. Her ring recovered. The boy sees himself in a cloud, his destination revealed. Hours in the future. A mistress becomes a mendicant. The recent past is recalled. Jeezy Pete's. A communication device is borrowed, a rendezvous arranged. The slayer is summoned, the collateral presented. <laughs> The droll is beckoned, the bargain honored. The boy finds the castle, his courier's path crossed. Boy, howdy. The mail is delivered, an obligation satisfied. The package is opened, letters read. John! John, from what I hear tell, you've been through a bit of an adventure by this time. By, uh, by the time you're reading this. That's so great. I love adventure and would bet my bottom boon buck you do too. I think we are birds of a feather, John. I am pretty eager to meet you. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned we are going to meet someday. I hear you like movies, is that right, John? I love movies too. Have you ever seen Weekend at Bernie's? So friggin' hilarious. It's hard to talk uh, to Jade about movies because she doesn't really know about movies, but I'm sure you know that. Boring. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. You know Jade, uh... Uh, just kidding, Jade. You know I love you, and I think you're a blast. Okay, speaking of Jade, we spent quite a long time working on this present for you. It was a big team effort. Okay, I had to do quite a lot of arm twisting to get her to go along with helping me make such an oddball present for you, and so well in advance. But I had my arm sort of twisted myself to get this going in the first place. But then she came around to the idea, because she can see the future. Pretty amazing, if you ask me. It'll all be clear later. Gadzooks, with all this arm twisting, I've been getting a good workout. We should wrestle when we meet, John. I love to wrestle, don't, uh, but I don't get a chance to wrestle with anyone that much. Do you like to get into fisticuffs, John? Scrums and whatnot. Me too. Anyway, you should listen to Jade from here on out, John, because she sure seems to know what's best for you. Whatever your adventure throws at you, I'm sure she'll tell you you can handle it. She believes in you. There is another page to this letter. Oh, kicking Christ in a dirty diaper. I almost forgot to mention... What's in this box? Sorry, this this shit's so small. I mean, obviously it's small contents. Royal Danger, Quills of Echidna, something crosshairs. There's another letter from a different author. Dear John. <clears throat> this one's Jade. Dear John, happy birthday. Even though it's super late and you probably went through a lot of trouble to get it, I really hope this present cheers you up. You look so sad while you're reading my letter. Um, what does it say the one you're reading now? I can explain. You see, when I go to sleep, in my dreams, I wake up uh, on the moon of a planet called Prospect. By now you must know about this place. I've lived there in my dreams most of my life, and I made so many friends there over the years. And you were there too, but you were asleep. 
The fact that you're awake now, I think, means all my friends are in trouble. You're awake because it is your job to help them. We'll both help them. But, um... I know these things because while I was on the moon, whenever it passed through sky, I, I could see lots of things in the clouds. The past, the future, stuff about other friends, and stuff about you. Uh, now that you're awake and apparently at the center of Skya, wow, you should be able to see stuff in the clouds too. Uh, maybe you already have. Uh, about this present, my pen pal helped me work on it. He included a letter too. He's really funny and silly. I like him a lot and I think you would too. It took a long time between the two of us, and sure the present looks like fun and completely ridiculous thing to get, but it is also uh, really important. You're getting exactly when you need it most. Maybe that's hard to believe, but it's true. I saw it happen already. I don't see everything, John, and I definitely don't know everything that's going to happen, but when I do know something, I always try to do my best to help people in the future. What I'm supposed to, that is. You'll get the hang of it. John, I'm really looking forward to seeing you when you wake up. It's been nice uh, playing with my prospicion friends and all, but also kind of lonely knowing you're in the other tower sleeping and having lousy dreams. I'm not sure where I am when you're reading this, but I'm sure I'll make it down to where you are soon. Jeez, how did you get down there? Oh, well, I'll find out. I can't wait to fly around the moon with you and show you all my favorite places. It'll be so much fun. Less than three, Jade. We'll be seeing the mystery here for a long while. Yeah, I didn't realize that Jake was present this early. I guess just completely skipped my mind, I guess. Oh, sad John. Oh, sad John with the sword in his face. <laughs> <coughs> a boy's grief is interrupted. His ring sought. Cheesy beats. The toy has taken a new master. The tactician, a misstep. Check. Hours in the future. <laughs> A regulator becomes a renegade. The recent past is recalled. Or no about it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> like I said, I forgot that Jake has that moment this far back. I guess he's the first of like the beta kids, right? That we hear from. That's interesting. A temple is fled and soon revisited. A nearby laboratory is also revisited. Its satellites dispatched. A sleeping boy is found, rumbling, ominous. <coughs> the lab is in flight. Its exit's inoperative. Oh, boy. Another public servant makes a sacrifice. A citizen's safety secured. A tyrant is retreating. A battleship landing. It's pop. Oh. A grandfather mourns, a family tradition, honored. A queen mourns, a kingdom bid farewell. Hours in the future. Her journey through the windswept must be walked alone. Her entourage bid farewell. A queen becomes a questant. And then years. A key is employed. Okay. <laughs> A command station repaired. Oh. Look at him. Look at the mayor. Okay. Oh, I should pull up what Serenity says. I forgot about this. One moment. I'll pull up my Serenity translator. Let's see. What be... This one. Uh, what a daring dream. Ah, <sighs> I don't know if that's present. Hmm. Well, I don't know what that says. <laughs> There's another cloud. And inside, a dark laboratory, unused for years. And inside, a fourth wall, pilfered from a bureaucrat's office and absconded with years ago. It isn't turned on, but if it was, this is almost certainly what we would see. Recap 2! Oh no. <laughs> Picking up where we left off! Oh my gosh. Alright, ready for the wallet text? <coughs> 
Picking up from where we left off, I typed a really long recap, then some other stuff happened. GC, Gallo's Calibrator, Helped John fly to the second gate, which took him to Rose's world, Lolar. He crashed into Rose's room where he found her asleep. He snooped through her room and Dave tricked him into giving him the code to duplicate Rose's writing journals. John opened the package Rose made for his birthday. It contained the bunny from Con Air, the same one John got from Dave, but older and dirtier and modified with Rose's knitting. She'd had the bunny since she was very young. Yeah, uh oh's right. <laughs> uh oh. John leaves Casey the Salamander, Bubbles Viceroy Von Salamancer, in the room. He bravely speaks to GA, Grim Auxiliatrix, from Rose's computer and pretends to be Rose. She believes he is, triggering a convoluted series of conversations between her and the real Rose in both the past and future in no particular order. GA gets help with her computer from TA, Twin Armageddons, in time to see Rose at her computer, having woken up. Before she woke up, Dream Rose was awake on Durse's moon. She uh, now ha uh, had memories from her future self's doomed alternate reality. She flew to Dream Dave's tower and got his attention with a ball of yarn, causing real Dave to fall asleep. They had a dream dance party. Dream Rose threw Dream Cal out the window. Bro's rocket board caught Dream Cal. AR followed the board and Cal to a transportalizer on Durse, which led to a meteor lab in the veil. Ugh. I like to read the recaps just because I do. I actually do need refreshers a lot of time because my memory is awful. Meanwhile, on Lola, Rose's mom defeated the huge monster, the Pony Maple, who followed her and collected the Grist Windfall. Both mom and the Pony then transported to the Meteor Lab. John's dad found a clean hat John had de uh, deposited into a parcel. Pixis. Dad followed Jade's grandpa, who was carrying John's Sasker book, into some ruins. They both transported to the Meteor Lab, too. Meanwhile, John used the Grist collected by the Pony to make a normal-sized version of a giant hammer, Fear No Anvil, which Dave Sprite gave him the code for. Dream Rose saw John on D Dream Dave's computer and woke up. She went out to see him, but he had already blasted off. He took the mutant kitten, Vodka Mutini, Dr. Meowgan Spengler, with him. John found the ruins that Mom and the Pony went into. He went in and killed some powerful monsters with his new hammer. He transported to the Meteor Lab as well. <sighs> in the lab, he found no one except the Pony. Some other strayed items were on the floor. Dad's dirty hat, the Sasker book, Dream Cal. He found some apparatus used to genetically engineer foot soldiers and agents for the white and black armies from chess, pieces, chess piece DNA. He also found a junior ectobiologist lab suit and a series of terminal, terminals which, like those the Exiles would find in the far future. He would use this apparatus to create paradox clones of himself, his friends, and their guardians. Meanwhile, AR surfed Bro's rocket board to a different meteor containing the frog temple that would later root itself near Jade's Island. Inside, he found the same time capsule she would find later. He also found some more lab equipment used for ectobiology. This equipment would soon be used to create Becquerel, a mutated combination of the genes from an ordinary dog in the early 20th century and the DNA code in one of Rose's journals. AR hides in the lab when he hears one of Jack's henchmen, the Draconian Dignitary, uh, Draconian Dignitary. DD is carrying Rose's duplicated journals, which he stole from Dave, and Dave's beta, which was used as a bookmark. <clears throat> he discards the beta into the time cap capsule. Millions of years later, from the capsule's perspective, Jade would retrieve that beta and use it to connect with Dave, allowing him to enter the medium. Dave created the journal duplicates after an extensive alchemy binge. Rose, too, had a similar alchemy session, and both kids upgraded their weapons and gear. Rose made a pair of needle wands, crossed with her grimoire, and took up the art of dark magic. She used his magic to burn her journal, thus destroying the genetic code. She was advised to do so by the gods of the furthest ring, whom she was now able to communicate with in her dreams. The gods live far beyond the veil and advise the children of the moon of Durst and serve as the counterpart to the role Skya plays for the children of Prospect's moon. They deemed the code which would inevitably be used to create Becquerel to be dangerous. <coughs> okay, I completely didn't catch that the, uh, the far gods were the uh, Durstian equivalent of Skya to the Prospect dreamers. Totally didn't realize that, or can make that connection. Dave decided to destroy his copy too, but when he went back to his room, he discovered they were stolen. He also found his own dead body, which apparently was him from the, the very near future, attempting to go back in time and stop the thief, DD. Dave decided not to attempt any more time travel and disposed of the body. GC, Gallus Calibrator, discussed the matter with him and pledged to help him by telling him his future along the way so that he would not have to fo face the death of more future selves or suffer the sort of embarrassment he went through while entertaining the medium. <sighs> Previously unseen, the way Dave entered the medium was as follows. As the large meteor was bearing down on his city, Dave climbed the radio tower on top of his building with his broken sword in hand to reach the nest built by the crow sprite. The sprite guarded the egg, which, unknown to Dave, simply needed the time to hatch before he could enter. The sprite pecked his head and he fell. He was saved by Bro's rocket board. Meanwhile, Bro uh, was on top of the meteor, riding it as it descended. He used his sword to chop it in half, splitting it into two pieces, diverting the initial impact from their building to two separate impact sites. He thus bought a little more time for the egg to hatch, which it did, just before their location was consumed by the blasts. So many SCPs to keep track of. There are a lot. There are a lot of SCPs. They're in the 4,000s now, I think, is the, the newest round of them. I There's too many. 
On Prospect Moon, PM, prepared to depart for the battlefield at the center of Sky to seek this king's counsel on what to do with the queen's ring. She was tailed by another of Noir's, uh, Noir's lackeys, the courtyard droll. CD picked her pocket and stole the ring. PM, departed via shuttle to the Sky. Dream Jade then clobbered CD and recovered the ring. She tried it on, but its power had no effect on uh, has no effect on humans. Later, CD would travel to the battlefield and continue tailing PM. The battlefield is a planet at the center of Skya. It undergoes a transformation with each player that enters the, the medium and each new prototype kernel introduced. It starts as a simple 3x3 chessboard with two kings and perpetual stalemate and expands to a larger board and more exotic collections of pieces with the first player entering. Then it becomes a much larger cube with the second player and then an even larger sphere with oceans, trees, mountains, and pastures with the third. It presumably will transform again with the fourth. The armies of the Black and White Kingdoms duel there. Soldiers are airlifted from meteor facilities to in, uh, in the Vale to supply the manpower. Enormous mutant chest-like monsters stalk the landscape. The two kings command their armies from the field. They each have a scepter which serves, uh, that serves a similar purpose to the queen's rings. When activated, a scepter causes a king to be a giant and bear the properties of all the prototypings. A king is able to deactivate a scepter, to hand it off to another so that they will not be affected in that way. When the Black King captures the White King's scepter, the Reckoning begins. The Reckoning sends all the meteors in the Vale towards Skya. In stages, first the small ones, then gradually the bigger ones, over a 24-hour period. <coughs> writing what would have been SCP-4464, we just weren't a fan of it. That's the hardest thing, is I've considered trying to write my own SCP once upon a time, but the whole review process is intimidating. <laughs> <sighs> there was a war-weary villain, Villain, on the battlefield who was a simple farmer and was tired of the conflict. WV, united a band of soldiers from both armies to lead a rebellion against the Black King. Before they could attack the king, Jack Damore, now empowered by the Black Queen's ring, intercepted the coup. He destroyed the Black King's scepter and killed the king. Jack then killed the entire rebellion army, sparing only WV, perhaps to leave a survivor to tell the story, or perhaps out of, out of respect for a fellow mutineer. Only he knows. Meanwhile, PM met with the White King. He disabled his scepter and gave it to her along with his crown. PM now had the crown of the uh, White King and Queen and the White Scepter, but discovered she had misplaced the White Queen's ring. Jack's muscle, the hegemonic brute, had been tailing the White King. HB then followed PM and attacked her. She dropped the scepter off a cliff. She would regroup and chop off HB's head with the registrar Jack gave her to kill the White Monarchs. CD, who had been tailing both of them, recovered the White Scepter and delivered it to Jack. Jack used it to initiate the Reckoning and would proceed to go on uh, a more extensive rampage, devastating the battlefield and prospect. Sorry, I think the original ideas. It really is. I, my, uh, the idea I was really sold on initially was the I whole idea of like the uh, origin of the phrase cold-hearted. It's basically a humanoid SCP who, if you were in proximity of him, the longer you were near him, your emotions would flip. So, like, if you loved something, you would slowly, gradually turn to hate it. And if you hated something, you gradually turn to love them. So, like, the whole, like, uh, exploration log I had was, like, two agents discovering, like, a woman had, like, bludgeoned her baby to death on the concrete because she, stopped, like, stopped to talk to this, this SCP for too long. That's the kind of stuff that I came up with. <laughs> anyway... Back in the meteor lab, John began the ectobiology session, which appeared to have been prepared for him in advance by the guardians who had just been there. The four monitors were all locked onto the kids' guardians at certain points of time, each on the day of one of the kids' birth. On Jade's birthday, Nana was locked onto in John's neighborhood by the Betty Crocker factory. The meteor-carrying baby Jade crashed into the factory and destroyed it. Her grandpa, the owner of that factory, would adopt her. John's dad witnessed and would spend years investigating. On Dave's birthday, Grandpa was locked onto while he was on his yacht, pioneering the island for the first time. He was sailing with baby Jade, overhead... There was a meteor carrying baby Dave, who would crash into Bro's favorite record shop. On Rose's birthday, Bro was locked onto and he, uh, as he stood over the crater where he would find baby Dave. He would give him a tiny pair of pointy shades. Overhead, there was a meteor carrying baby Rose, which would land in a lake and destroy it. Rose's mom would retrieve and adopt her. Months later, on John's birthday, mom would, uh, mom would bring Rose to John's neighborhood to investigate the destruction of Grandpa's factory and related stellar phenomena. The target was locked uh, on her. Dad came out of the family joke shop to greet her, leaving Nana inside. The meteor carrying baby John destroyed the shop, killing Nana. Dad would adopt John, and Rose's mom disappeared. Dad retrieved her scarf and filed the clue away for his ongoing investigation. John attempted, unwittingly, to appearify all four guardians, but since removing them from those moments would have caused a paradox, he instead paradoxified their ghost slime imprints. This slime was collected into two pairs of containers. One pair collected Nana and Grandpa's slime. The other pair collected bro uh, Mom and Bro's. The device then created baby paradox clones of the four guardians. These babies would then later be sent back in time to become those guardians themselves. Ugh. Any artifact in Homes like SP? It kind of is, actually. <clears throat> One 
Once those four clones were created, another sequence activated. The two pairs of slime tubes emptied into vats below. The Nana Grandpa slime mixed together, and separately, the Mom Bro slime mixed together as well. An additional four Paradox clones were created from those two slime concoctions. Baby John and Dave were created from the Nana Grandpa slime. Baby Rose and Dave... Uh, Baby John and Jade, excuse me. Baby Rose and Dave were created uh, from the Mom Bro slime. These four babies would also go back in time to become the four kids via meters in the sequence and on the dates listed above. All eight babies would each write their own meteors, launched from the veil after Jack started the reckoning, and into the defense portals deployed by Skya to protect itself. The defense portals uh, each led to Earth, as Skya defends itself in a way by sacrificing Earth. While most meteors are sent, back, uh, sent to the time period when the kids begin the game, many lead to a number of different time periods, some 13 years prior to the game, used by the kids, some nearly a century prior, used by Nana and Grandpa, some millions of years ago, used eventually by the Frog Temple Meteor, and some to the far future, used by the Exiles. And all eight of them would travel with an object or animal. John with his Sasker book, which would become the much older looking family heirloom stored in Dad's safe, with Nana Sprite's inscription to, to John on it, Rose with the dirty bunny Dave gave John for his birthday, Dave with the pony Maple Hoof, Jade with a uh, knit repaired bunny Rose got John for his birthday, which Rose cherished since birth, Nana with Dad's dirty hat, Mom with mute, uh, Mutini, Meowgan, Grandpa with two flintlock pistols, which older Grandpa left behind for him in the lab, which would eventually both wind up in Jade's room, and Bro with Dream Cal, which would later be fitted with a new personalized shirt and would become Real Cal. The same doll that would haunt Dave's waking life and consequently his dreams. All of these babies and their items would autom automatically be transported to their own meteors at the onset of the Reckoning. John made absolutely sure to give Baby Rose and Jade their bunnies when he saw an opportunity to reenact a scene from one of his favorite movies, much to the dismay of watching CG, Carcinogeneticist. While A.R. was in the Frog Temple lab, he would see more of young Nana and Grandpa's story. On 4 13 19 exactly 99 years prior to John's birth, baby Nana's meteor destroyed a bakery owned by Betty Crocker. Nana was adopted by Crocker's husband, Colonel Sasker, and taken to live in his mansion. Eight days later, Grandpa's meteor destroyed the doghouse belonging to Sasker's dog, Haley. Haley was, uh... Uh, elsewhere, and was unharmed. When Sasker and Nana went to investigate the crater, Sasker was shot and killed accidentally with one of Grandpa's pistols. Haley then showed up, uh, who young Grandpa would tend to, pres uh, to pronounce Harley due to his speech impediment, and would largely serve as their guardian for the next 13 years, with presumably some parental uh, influence from the wicked Crocker. On his 13th birthday, Grandpa would run off with Harley to find adventure. Nana would stay behind, contend with the batter, wi batter witch, and master the art of baking, as well as take up her deceased grandfather's tradition of pranksterism. Harley was locked onto by the Frog Temple's equipment. Dee Dee activated the device and produced a Paradox clone of Harley combined with the controversial Meow Code to create a uh, puppy Beck. The spe spectacle terrified AR, leaving a major impression on him. He would recognize Beck's silhouette carved on WV's pumpkin years later. The pumpkin commanded his fear and caused him to surrender. Okay, that- I forgot about that. that okay, that, that checks. That tracks. Uh, satirical take on horror movie monsters and how they're illogically overpowered, or as we like to call it, an X-Man. <laughs> <coughs> that's fair that's kind of an interesting idea i would I think it'd be kind of interesting to play that into like um i think it's a tibetan uh superstition where if you meditate hard enough you can bring objects to life um like creatures to life and that's sort of supposedly like where the yeti comes from if you meditate and focus long enough you can eventually bring thoughts to life so it'd be interesting if you could play that into such a way with like horror movie monsters and the fear creates them to be overpowered essentially making like a real jason or a real freddy something to that effect and yes it is a lot of text we're almost done there we're almost down there huh Meanwhile, the grown-up versions of Mom and Dad were on board a flying battleship along, uh, belonging to Grandpa, who piloted it towards Skya. Dad gave Mom her long-discarded scarf from the day he lost his mother and found his son. The two guardians traded gestures of affection. Jade remained asleep through it all, trying to stay on the moon as long as she could until she figured out how to wake John up. She talked about the AT, Audios Toreador, who revealed he preferred his dream self on Prospect more than any aspect of the game and regretted all the trolls' dream selves were now dead. Jade expressed surprise at the notion of dream self mortality. After Jack used the full power of the ring to devastate the battlefield and the two armies, he turned his attention on Prospit, inflicting severe damage the same way. He then cut the chain connecting the moon to Prospit, sending the moon plummeting through the atmosphere of Skya and breaking up in the process. Dream John, still asleep, fell out of his tower and drifted down ahead of the falling moon. Dream Jade flew to intercept him and spent a moment attempting to wake him before the moon's collision was imminent. At the last minute, she flung Dream John out of the blast radius, but was not able to clear the blast herself. She died. The blast left a massive crater on the battlefield. This was the first thing Dream John saw when he woke up. 
The death of Dream Jade caused her dream bot to malfunction and explode, destroying her room. Still asleep, Jade fell from her tower as Beck watched from a distance, and an enormous meteor loomed overhead. Elsewhere on Dave's world, Lohak, Bro dueled with Jack briefly. It was a stalemate until Bro plunged his sword into the large floating record platform they were fighting on. This released a mysterious energy from the cracks. Bro escaped. Rose completed her final GameFAQs walkthrough entry and used magic to seal it in a server in the furthest ring to be accessed by players in worlds beyond their own. She had destroyed her first gate on a whim and resolved to search for answers to remedy the hopelessness of their doomed session. Meanwhile, Dave entered his first gate, riding into it with his awesome skateboard, Unreal Air. The four exiles arrived on Earth years after its apocalypse, but years before they found their respective command stations. WV wrapped himself in John's dream blanket, which became dirty and unrecognizable over time. He found it along with a jack-like doll on the battlefield, which formerly sat in Dream John's bedroom, haunting his dreams. WV ripped it apart. PM wrapped herself in a prospect banner, which too faded in time. AR wrapped himself in caution tape, using his own supply, as well as some fresh rolls he was lucky enough to discover near the ruined frog temple in one of Grandpa's old crates. This was after he escaped th that same temple in the medium and found the meteor lab in which John slept. That meteor then took off for Skya, via the Reckoning. AR taped John to the rocket board and cast him off before the meteor went through the portal. Thus, AR became exiled. WQ exiled herself with an entourage on a royal cruiser and landed on Earth. She departed on a solo quest, leaving her people to their own devices. She discovered her command station, a large egg, broken in two pieces in the two large craters made by Dave's split meteor. She used a key to repair the egg station and teleported to the present... Uh, to the present location of the Exiles, the Frog Ruins at night, 413 years after the apocalypse of Earth. On the battlefield, Dream John found Dream Jade's body. He was sad and confused and took her ring as a keepsake. Later, Grandpa would land his ship on the battlefield, find and recover her body, and use it to create a stuffed trophy as a memorial, as per the proud family tradition. He would depart in his ship and leave Mom and Dad behind. John saw a vision in a cloud directing him where to go. It was the castle where he could rendezvous with P.M., PM, after beheading HB, used his rage to summon Jack. He came, and she traded the two white crowns for the green box, Jade's present to John. He appeared pleased to uphold the bargain, either out of the misunderstanding that he was still under control of its contents, or out of respect for PM's audacity and brutality in pursuing the prize. Only he knows. Ugh. PM delivered the package to John and then left, not thrilled by the trials caused by its recovery. John opened it to find letters from Jade and her pen pal, who helped her make the present for him over several years. The gift was the pen pal's idea, and he himself was coerced into the plan by someone else. The box contained, box contained a modified version of the stuffed bunny John had received for his birthday twice already. It was the same knit-repaired bunny John sent back in time with baby Jade, and she presumably kept it, in, uh, kept it as a cherished childhood toy ever since. It was now upgraded with mechanical parts, fully mobile and autom autonomous. It was also included with four powerful weapons, the Royal Derringer, Broken Sword, the Quills of Echidna, Wands, Ahab's Crosshairs, Rifle, and the Warhammer of Zillihu, Hammer. Each was shrunken down to be bunny-sized. As John mourned Jade's death over her letter, he was interrupted by Jack's sword. Jack was after the ring, but the heavily armed mechanical bunny intervened, recognizing John as its new master. Jack, knowing the danger of the toy, was forced to retreat. Finally, a cloud showed John what he was supposed to do with the ring. It was held by a mysterious black hand in the far future on Earth. The exiles gathered around Exile Town. WQ asked WV for something. WV revealed he had been storing the... The complete quad prototype ring in the sleeve of his trusty knife. It had been there all along, much to Serenity's surprise. And then I started working on Act 5. Huh. 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 Let's get some, let's get some, let's just, let's drink a bit. Okay. My tea has been seeping for about 20 minutes. Take a moment here to just enjoy. We're done with recap two. <laughs> Please. Thanks, guy. <sighs> All right. How hot is this? Still hot. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. One more sip of water, though. All right. Act five. Uh, is Act 5 the start of the Trolls? We made it, Serena. That's okay. I'll have, I'll have Halpa in her strong hands. <laughs> Elsewhere, in Paradox Space, we examine another planet, forgotten by time. But we will strive to remember. What was this planet's name? Enter name.
I love that. Like, yeah, fuck if I know what that is. Oh, ha ha. Nice one, smarty pants. Really hilarious. But let's get real here. No more clowning around. This looks like the um, Oblivion text. Like the Oblivion... It's Oblivion text. That's about all I can think of. That is much better. In fact, as it happens, your guess is precisely correct. What are the odds? We examine the planet Alternia. Somewhere on this planet, there is a young troll. Hive bent. There he is. This young troll's... Why does he, why does he have a trollian poster? That seems like a weird thing to have a poster for. This young troll stands in his respite block. It just so happens that today, the 12th by lunar peregrine of the 6th dark season's equinox, is the day of this young troll's larval awakening, also known as his wriggling day. Though it was six solar sweeps ago he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. Six alternian solar sweeps, for convenient reference, is equivalent to 13 Earth years. Earth, also for convenient reference, is a planet that does not yet exist. What will the name of this young troll be? Enter name. Reverse Daedric or something like that. That would make sense. It definitely looks Daedric. <laughs> <clears throat> you enter something particularly derogatory, and this guy gets fed up by your shenanigans in record time. This guy has a lot of troll pals, and their adventures are going to be quite extensive and convoluted to an even greater degree than one perhaps may be accustomed. He thinks that if you think that we have time to drag out every little gag and expect a pattern along the way, you've got another thing coming. He thinks you should cram that sobering understanding in your chitinous windhole and tamp it down hard with your ugly, stupid-looking cartilage nub. Try again. <coughs> your name is Kark Advantis. As was previously mentioned, it is your wriggling day, which is barely even worth mentioning. It is an anniversary, if anything, to lament the faults of your existence, of which there are assuredly plenty. Equally plenty, and somewhat related to that topic, are your interests. You have a passion for ridiculously terrible romantic movies and rom-coms. You should really be embarrassed for liking this dreadful cinema, but for some reason, you are not. You like to program computers, but you are notoriously pretty awful at it. Your programs invariably damage the machines on which they are executed, which is just as well, since you like to believe you specialize in computer viruses. When you mature, you aspire to join the ranks of the most lethal members of your society, the Threshecutioners. You like to practice with your really cool sickle, but just wind up looking like kind of a doofus by yourself in your room. You like to chat with some of your other troll pals, most of which drive you batship up the fucking belfry. You have been trying to, uh, uh, you've been trying out a new chat client beta called Trollian, and you are not really sure what you think about it yet. Your troll tag is carcinogeneticist, and you speak in a manner that is almost exclusively ornery all the time. Later, you will play a game with five other friends and go on a big adventure with them. This game, for convenient reference, is a game that does not yet exist, but it will soon. What will you do? Carcat, examine slimy purple pod. Man, we're at the trolls. I didn't. I thought the trolls were after page two thousand, but here we be. It is your recoup raccoon, full of nourishing soap or slime. Every young troll enjoys the cozy embrace of such a vessel each night, and the relaxing ooze helps assuage the terrible visions of blood and carnage that plague the dark subconscious of your species. It is so inviting. A few minutes couldn't hurt. Get in. Okay, the sure is cozy and all, but you can't be napping all day like a chump. Damn it, you're a busy guy. You are sort of a big deal. God damn slime, now you have to change your clothes too. What were you thinking? Luckily, all your clothes are the same. Trolls think fashion is stupid. <coughs> well, this troll does. Examine movie posters. <sighs> okay, it's time to get serious here. Sweet troll Jigas. Let's get real and get down to some major business. You space out and get caught up reading the titles of the films for about five minutes. Wow, these movies are great. You don't care what anyone says. Pure magic. Is that? Is that John Cusack? The thing that most people don't realize is that John Cusack is a universal constant. Oh, it's going to be awful, guy. <coughs> this movie. Okay, this one, even you have a hard time defending. But still, it's so good. The best thing about it is how Troll, S how Troll Sandler doesn't make you want to punch anything. Like, nothing at all. Really hard or anything. Capture Log Sickle. You grab your trusty sickle with your encryption modus. You, to retrieve it, you'll need to hack the code to open the card vault left behind. This will obviously prove to be a completely ridiculous and untenable way of managing an inventory, and lead to a great many follies. Later on, you would swap your modus with your hacker friend, a guy who, unlike you, happens to be competent with programming. It would only make sense. But for the time being, it makes your life kind of a nightmare. There are so many stupid things that happen because of this modus. So many. You just have no idea. <laughs> Take card vault. Overlong modus titles, my movie titles make me laugh. Yeah, it's so fucking great. I love that they're just like 30, 40, 50 words long. God damn it. You hear some unhappy grumbling through the hole below. This was not the coolest thing you could have done just now. Examine large black book. 
you make uh, quite sure not to capture log it and simply pick it up and read it. ATH, a handbook for the Im in, uh, imminently deceased. Chapter 1. Prepare your ATH file. Dig your grave. A bone to pick. For death begins with life's first breath, and life begins at touch of death. Troll Will Smith. It is a thick programming manual called ATH, a handbook for the imminently deceased. ATH is an insufferable language to work with. Its logic is composed of nothing but infinite loops, or at best, loops of effectively in interminable construction. The above page in the intro section documents the simplest possible ATH code structure. Any code deviating from this basic structure, structure will not compile. You have a whole bunch of code samples you've been messing around with on your computer. It's been frustrating at best and debilitating to your machine at worst. Leave your room. <laughs> Carcat, I keep my blood color a secret, Vantus. Except someone mentioned how, uh, like, it's like how the sufferer uh, put red on his clothes to show, like, fealty or feigned fealty to the Empress. <coughs> All right, till day, till death. Oh! Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Thanks for that, Serena. It is great. That's awesome. I love that. You step outside your respite block onto one of your hive's numerous extraterrestrial landing slats. You were allowed to design this hive when you were young, after you emerged victorious from your trials deep in the brooding caverns. You have lived here with your custodian ever since. It's almost as if your people have placed great cultural importance on teaching children to become architecturally adept while very young. It has been this way since ancient times. No one seems to know why that is. Getting to build your own hive at a young age using whatever meandering de design you chose likely has left you jaded to the notion of customizing your abode. You certainly wouldn't get all that worked up about a game that happened to allow you to do such a thing. At least, not for that reason. Examine neighborhood. Look at that. Look at, look at his face. High bent. The lawn rings are empty. Blood skims the voids in your porous cranial plates as if grazing the hollow of a thresh, uh, threshed stem or, say, an abandoned cocoon. A sour note is produced. It's the one agitation plays to make its audience squirm. It is your sixth wriggling day, and with all five proceeding, blah, 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 look. <laughs> You don't have time for fancy poetry. It's almost as useless as those arms swinging flappy things on mailboxes. Assuming you even knew what those were, which you don't. Trolls don't have mail. Mail is almost as useless as poetry to them. Poetry is a swing arm flappy dealy of words, and mail is the red tilty lever doodad of giving people shit. Frankly, you don't know about things skimming voids or grazing hollows or whatever. You've got ambition. You were meant to be a big shot, to be in charge of something huge and really important, and to be totally ruthless about it. You just haven't found the dominion in which you're destined for greatness yet, or even a vague concept of it. You haven't found your purpose, but you will tonight. You stew in your, in your own impotent aggravation in the cool dusk breeze. During the dark seasons, it remains dusk for most of the day. It can stay for dark, uh, I can say dark for many bilunar paragraphs at a time, but even if it didn't, you would still have this feeling. You have a feeling it's going to be a long night. Go back inside. That's the great thing about Homestuck. You can read it so many times and you'll pick up something new each time. You head back into your block and hit up your computer station. No word from any of your loudmouth pals. No news is good news. Sweet music for your auricular sponge clots. Check out magazine. Oh, excuse me. Fuck me. It's the latest issue of Grain Grub. It's horrible. I hate it. This one appears to boast about exclusive leaks. They all boast about that, but you're, uh, you're not even really sure what it means. Check out DVD. The Thresh Prince. <clears throat> it is a DVD of one of your favorite series, The Thresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's about a green Thresh Kushner cadet who sasses up the blue bloods in his flay squad pretty good. Their blood is literally blue, lousy snobs, but troll Will Smith shows them all how to loosen up. He's pretty much your hero. Troll TV shows have shorter titles than troll movies because TV is a much newer form of media in their society, which is a good thing because it would be pretty hard to make this funny joke otherwise. <laughs> Get down to business on computer. Impotent aggravation. I love that it's not even impotent rage. It's just impotent aggravation. <clears throat> Okay, enough messing around. Time to get work done. Maybe a little programming or... Oh, God. It figures that installing this new beta chat client would open the floodgates. All your moron friends are going to be hounding you relentlessly. Not that they needed any issues before. You wonder what this chump wants. Answer troll. Excuse me while I get some water.
Oh boy. Terminally capricious began trolling carcinogeneticist. What is up, my inverted brother? What in the sweet almighty taint shaving fuck do you want? Not a motherfucking thing, bro. Other than that, I'd be checking out how my best motherfucking friend is at, yo. I really can't stand you, and I hate how you type. It just bothers me so much. Have I mentioned that? You say it pretty much every time we talk, yeah. But, uh, I don't have to. Uh, see? But, I mean, man, this feels so motherfucking unnatural and shit. You just gotta be going with what feels right and where your heart's up in, you know? Best friend. I wonder what kind of shitty thing I did to deserve such an awful best friend. Or maybe what terrible thing I'm going to do and get punished for in advance. Maybe I'm just, like, preemptively the worst fucking piece of sh trash who ever lived and I don't know it yet. But hey, look, your friendship is exhibit A, I guess. It's such a beautiful thing. This troll disease called friendship. Friendship isn't a disease, shit sponge. It's like a mistake, a big joke of nature. It's a miracle. Oh, no, don't. Don't start with the miracles again. Man, everywhere I look, all I see is motherfucking miracles. It's so spiritual, all these miracles and shit. Okay, like, just be taking this fucking tits bottle of fucking Fago I just cracked up open. And now it's being all, like, hissing and shit. Motherfucking hissing, man. Who went all and told it to do that? How would it even do that? It's crazy. It's a miracle. It's carbonation, you ignorant douche. Try getting school fed some time instead of slurping down that weird swill all day and fondling your stupid horns. No, no, bro. I want to know. Don't even tell me. No one shit just steals up all the fucking magic from my miracles like a fuck motherfucking thief. And that ain't cool. The only miracle is that you like that disgusting sludge. Where do you even get that stuff? It's also a miracle how you dress like an imbecile and are basically the stupidest asshole I've ever known. Actually, you're right. There are miracles everywhere. I've been a fool. See, man? I'm straight up telling you. Miracles. It's like, all right, computers, right? What the fuck? Miracles is what? Fuck you. Fuck you for me just reading that. Anyway, what's up with your bad self for serious here? Isn't something big all going down? What? I heard something big was going all down. Just all be telling me all that motherfucking it's up and all about. Stop saying that. Are you talking about TA's thing? Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. So mysterious. I'm never being getting ceased to be amazed by all these fucking mysteries life's got for us. Uh... <clears throat> anyway, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe I'll talk to him tonight about it. And maybe I won't. It's probably just another one of his projects that winds up, uh, that winds up being completely useless and a huge waste of my time. Yeah, maybe, but he's your best friend though, so it's all cool. Anyway, I thought this sounded like a pretty big motherfucking deal, my man. Uh... What? Uh, bro, never mind. I just fucking did like to scare the shit out of myself here. These damn horns. You've got to get rid of those things. They make it more embarrassing to know you. Which is a, like, which is a freaking miracle that that's, that's, uh, that that's even possible. Like, wow, God sure cooked up a doozy there. Twinkly-eyed son of a bitch just keeps you guessing, doesn't he? Man, you know you want to give my horns a good squeeze. Actually, you know what will be the miracle to end all miracles? It'll be if I ever meet a kid I despise more than you. That will make me a motherfucking convert. I'll see light so bright, I'll need Jeezy to walk me around so I don't bump into shit. Sign me up for idiotic clown religion, okay? <laughs> you fucking got it, brother. At least Gamesy isn't too bad. It's clown time. You, think it's, you mean thank Jesus it's clown time? Oh, thanks, guy. I remember back in the day, Octopimps was like almost the de facto Gamesy voice. But it was like kind of... I, I can't even imitate it. It was fucking weird. But he was, like, the biggest one. So difficult to imagine for some reason. That's fair. I think there was a, that was a thing, like, back in the day also, is that, like, who's your headcanon? There was a group of people that were like, I just read it, man. It's, it's my own voice, I guess. <laughs> anyway. Whoa, what the motherfuck? Who's this motherfucking motherfucker? It's cool. Life is like that sometimes. It's full of mysteries. You'll be doing one thing, and then something else hits you. Just like, uh, just like that, and you roll with it. That's what you do when life hands you lemons. You sure as fuck don't make lemonade because who the fuck knows where that fucking shit comes from. It's squeezed out of miracles, I swear. So what's this motherfucker's name? Enter name. These posters are horrifying. They're so scary. Your name is Gamzee Makara. 
You get pretty excited by clowns of a grim persuasion, which may not be in full possession of their mental faculties. You belong to a rather obscure cult, which foretells of a band of rowdy and capricious minstrels which will rise one day on a mythical paradise planet that does not exist yet. The beliefs of this cult are somewhat frowned upon by those dwelling in more common lawn rings, but you don't care. Uh, you got to be going with what feels right at where your heart's up in, you know? You like to practice on your one-wheel device, which you are god-awful at because your feet do not reach the pedals. You enjoy a fine beverage and uh, and like to do a little baking sometimes. You've got all these horns all over the place, and sometimes you step on them and scare the shit out of yourself. You like to chat a lot with your pal Carcat, who is usually pretty cranky, but he is your best friend. You have a lot of other great friends who you who also like a lot. Your troll tag is terminally capricious, and you speak in a manner that is just a little bit whimsical. What will you do? Capture log bottle of Fago. Voice for line era. That's pretty much it. That's fair. <clears throat> May I ask, who is it? I don't know if I have a uh, voice for line era, actually. Hmm. You snag a bottle of Fago. To consume the, uh, the beverage is what your fellow devotees refer to as the kick and wicked elixir. It is capture log through the miracle modus. You have absolutely no idea how this thing works. And you don't want to know. Capture log computer. I guess... I, I, here's the thing. I say this a lot about Homestuck. I forgot that the the uh, clown cult was supposed to be pretty obscure. Because it's pretty commonplace once you get into, like, friends and shit. Hmm. <clears throat> this guy sounds like an angel about anyone who says otherwise. That is very fair. I will be right by your side, guy. <laughs> you take your husk top. Sometimes you just like to pick stuff up and watch the colors. It's so beautiful. Life is beautiful. Ride one wheel device. Skyla, best troll. You decide to give this diabolical contraption another shot. Maybe one of these days you'll, uh, you will get one more suited to your proportions. For now, this is all you have to work with. You just have to figure out how to stay on the thing without flying off the handle. You do some sort of acrobatic fucking pirouette off the handle and into a big pile of horns. Sample delicious pie cooling on the counter. <laughs> The lick, there it is. It is still piping hot, but you can't help yourself. You sneak a taste of the soap or slime pie. You aren't supposed to eat that slime. It does funny things to a troll's head. But you never taught that on account of a lousy upbringing. Your custodian is always out to sea. That is where he is now. You, uh, maybe you'll go outside and see if you can spot him. Take a juggling club. Strike says, club kind. You grab a juggling club. You'll need if you're going to go out. It is dangerous to leave unarmed. Go outside. He's got yellow on his uh, hive. That's interesting. You leave your hive and head out to the beach. There's no sign of your custodian. You should not stay out here very long. The sea dwellers are quite hostile. It's patched by fans to make so many characters that were similar to them. <clears throat> That's true, because, like... We basically, we had the 24 once um, the Alpha Trolls were released. But all we had were the 12, and they were the only 12 we saw for the longest time. I want to say until the Alpha Trolls. And then we had the two fan trolls that won uh, uh, a contest to have it featured. <laughs> they were there for three panels? Two panels? They were killed immediately. Uh, in the future. <laughs> we will be killed immediately. And then now we have... Oh boy, what is it? 30 something other trolls, 36 trolls that are also canon now because of Friendsome. And there's even Hive Swap with Zephros and um, the Tetrarch. <clears throat> Someone is bugging you. I got sidetracked, sorry. Someone is bugging you. This is exciting. You're always down for shooting the wicked shit with anyone who will put up with you. Now, if only you could figure out how to get your husk top out of this stupid thing, it'll be a miracle if you can, ma can manage. Retrieve husk top. <laughs> <laughs> you say a short prayer to beloved mirthful Messiahs and splash a pinch of special stardust in your face. <laughs> Launch. Your Silidex launches your beverage far, far into the ocean. <laughs> you wonder if you can just sort of reach over and answer troll. <laughs> <coughs> Gallows Calibrator began trolling Terminally Capricious. Ugh. Honestly, Teresi's voice is harder for me to do than Carcats. Hey, Gams, I want to play, uh, uh, you want to play mm, Gamsies with me? 
Games is with me. Hey, yeah, that sounds like the motherfucking shit's bitch tits. It sure is hard to ignore the weird things you say sometimes, but I'm gonna. The only reason I'm asking you is because your name is, like, Game, and no other reason. Get it? <laughs> well, a lot of worse fucking reasons to be getting all about to do something. Honk. Not that should, uh, uh no, that should bother you, that reason. Uh, why don't things like that bother you? You wonder, uh, you wonder Vantus can't stand you, but who cares about him? We're going to have some motherfucking shitty bitches playing to- mm -hmm, Bitches playing together. Or whatever you said. So, is this the game I've heard about? The big mystery? Yeah. Whoa, okay. Uh, this is going to be fucking insane. But, can we play a little later? I'm outside keeping an eye out here for the old goat. You know how it is with family. No, not really. A dur dur dur. Oh, yeah. Dur. Way to go. How does that stupid bottled syrup of yours taste with your oof so far up your mouth? Sorry. Anyway, I'll go inside in a while. Why don't you get Car Cat to, pot, uh, to fire up that motherfucker with you? He likes games. Oh, no. God, can you imagine all the bitching and moaning? I used to try to play stuff with him, but wow, did I learn my lesson. All right, well... I'll try to get in and get up on my chill real soon and we can play. Just give me a minute. Bullshit. You know you're just going to sit there on the beach and space out and lose track of time. Hello? Games? What? Oh, man, sorry. I spaced out. Did you know how beautiful the sound of the ocean is? Have you ever seen the ocean? Or, I mean, smelled it? Sorry. <laughs> Car cat, get some programming done. Huh. <sighs> Finally, some peace and quiet. Now you can bear down on your coding. This will surely last all evening without interruption. You reopen one of your uh, ATH projects. I'm just going to call it ATH. It's easier than tilde, tilde HTH. Projects need to start recently. You are still horsing around with the conditions for terminating the loops. With many ATH, uh, What many ATH coders do is import finite constructs and bind the loops to their lifespan. For instance, the main loop here will terminate on the death of the universe, labeled U. That way you only have to wait billions of years for it to end instead of forever. You have bound a sub-loop to the lifespan of the code's author, which is you. Any routine, routine at the end will execute you uh, when you die. <sighs> you figure this might be handy for coding something to release a final will and testament, or maybe some doomsday, doomsday virus. You spend a lot of time thinking of ways to make the perfect doomsday virus. Conveniently absent from ATH's extensive import library are entities with short lifespans, like a rapidly decaying particle that only lasts a millisecond sure would be handy, or even a fruit fly or something. But no, coding with this language is all about finding ways to trick it into doing what you want. Your hacker buddy is obnoxiously good at it. He sent you some files which you still don't understand, but you're not going to admit that. He's even better at making viruses than you, which really gets in your nook. Check out one of his files. <laughs> this code, when executed, immediately causes the user's computer to explode and places a curse on the user forever, along with everyone he knows and everyone he'll ever meet. Not surprisingly, later on you would run this code in a fit of stupidity. You don't know how he does stuff like this. What does this even mean? It's nonsense. Is it even... Syn uh, syntact mm, syntactically viable? Are you allowed to color text like that? Ah, maybe you should ask him about it sometime. Oh, speak of the devil. Here he is bugging about something. Time to put on your game face and pretend you don't think very highly of his abilities. <laughs> Answer troll. <laughs> the keyboard's smashing. Oh, I love it. Twain Armageddon's began trolling carcinogeneticist. Is this a different color yellow? KK, don't flip your shin about this, but I'm setting you up to play with a game with some people. With some people. Why would I flip my shit about that? Because you flip your shit about everything. Well, will you look at this? Here is my shit, and yet it remains unflipped. Just sitting there on the skillet, getting burned on one side. It's a miracle. Oh, no, you're in a miracle now, too? Because if you are, you're uh, fired preemptively from the game. Fuck no. Okay, nice. Miracles are like a, like poop stains on God's underwear. <laughs> Making fun of people's religion is the best thing to do. That's why, that's, ugh, <laughs> that's why he hides... <laughs> That's why he hides them. They're fucking embarrassing. God launders in mysterious ways. <laughs> right on. But let's shut our mouth a second and talk about this game. It'll only be a second, really. You don't have to do anything. Do much. Do. Hmm. You don't have to do much. Okay, good, because I'm pretty busy tonight. What is this thing anyway? Why all this secrecy? Well, the short story is that it's an immersive simulation, a simulation that you play with a group. The long story is that the fate of our civilization depends on us playing it. Huh. I guess, I, like, I guess the long one was shorter than the short one. Fuck! That sounds like melodramatic bullshit, but coming from you, me, uh, but coming from you, color me unsurprised. Screw you, Vantith. This shit's more real than Kraft Grubthoth. Fucking hell. 
Craft Grubthoth. Right, okay, so you made this game? No, no, more like I adapted it. From what? Some crazy technology AA dug out of some ruins. Haven't you talked to her about it? Man, no, I can't talk to her. She's so spooky. I don't know why most of our friends are such psychos. Probably it's because most trolls are. Uh, if you heard what I heard every night, I mean, wow, fuck. No, let's not talk about your weird mutant brain, and don't scan mine or whatever. It's off limits, you douche. I told you like a billion times, I can't do that, you nub thurping fuckpod. Why are you two up to the secret stuff? Why haven't you told me anything about this? KK, I'm sorry, but really, it's kind of a private matter between me and her, and I'd appreci appreciate it, appreciate it, uh, if that was respected. Oh, God, stop being so sensitive. It's a repugnant quality. Okay, how about you take your own advice? You are such a blubbering hypocrite. You're lucky I'm so fucking magnanimous and charitable. Otherwise, I... Because otherwise, there's no chance I'd waste my time on you. What a load of shit! This act that you actually think you're a hot shot. You know you hate yourself. Nobody hates himself more than you, idiot. Yeah, well, I hate you way more than I hate myself, and that's fucking saying something. In fact, I hate you more than I hate myself, and you hate yourself, and you hate me combined. Oh, fuck that... Oh, fuck that noise. In every leaking orifice, it's got... It's got... Uh, you know I hate the combined product of you and myself more than you could ever begin to hate me and myself and you and more... Uh, and yourself on your worst day, so fucking deal with it! Okay, time out for the idiot. The idiot gets a timeout and shuts up for a second. That's you. Just tell me what to do about this game. Okay, well, I'll send you a download soon. I'm setting up two teams. Like, two separate competing teams, so that there's a better chance of at least one group winning. And also, I guess, to see which one can win faster. Okay, let me guess. <laughs> Fuck, it's hard to switch between the two. Okay, let me guess. There's a red team and a blue team, right? Yeah, you're on the red team. I'll be the leader of the blue. Okay, then I guess I can pick my teammates then? Uh, bro, you're not the team leader. I picked GC for that. What? Dude, I did not think you'd be into the myth. Don't get, uh, don't act all offended. Oh, wow, now I see. Really fucking clever. Picking the blind girl to lead the team we were competing with. I knew you were a cheater, lowlife fucking scumbag with no scruples or self-esteem. We're basically worthless in, on every level. But somehow, I'm still disappointed in you. Yeah, I'm such an idiot for not rewarding your bubbly personality and impeccable people skills with a leadership gig. What an inconsiderate uh, knuckle sponge asshole I've been. I am a hash leader and you know it. I know your filthy theme flap is fluttering in the profane breeze that's shooting uh, out of your thinking meal tunnel. I do know that much. How do you get out of your cocoon in the morning knowing you're the worst thing a universe was ever responsible for? Also, it must be hard with your hands so persistently bothering every mutated set of genitals peppering that ghastly husk of uh, you pawn of as a body. Has a female ever looked at you without, uh, uh, looked at you without at once turning skyward and erupting like a vomit volcano? Answer me that. This is so immature. I'm basically just laughing here at how immature you are. Like, I really give a fuck who the red leader is. You want to be the leader? Fine. Talk to GT about it. I guess there, these conversations we have do get kind of embarrassing in retrospect. Are we not friends anymore because of stuff I said? <laughs> you literally ask me that every time you are, uh, every time. Are you joking? I can't even tell anymore. It's a joke, moron. Honestly, I'm just glad no one, nobody else is privy to our conversations. Actually, why don't we make a pact to delete this one from our logs? I'm just shuddering here, scrolling up and reading this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Grumble. Sounds like someone downstairs is getting pretty crabby. You fucking kidding me? This is not an encounter you are looking forward to. You'll probably put it off as long as you can manage. Is my tea ready to drink yet? Yes, yes it is. Oh, that's awful. Oh, I got throat coat tea. I normally put honey in it. I didn't this time just to see what I was like. Awful. Don't recommend it. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Why, who's this young lady? Enter name. Your name is Terezi Pyro. You are pretty enthusiastic about dragons, but you have a particular affection a particular affection for their colorful scales, which you gather and use to decorate your hive. Though you live alone, deep in the woods, you surround yourself with a variety of plushy pals known as scalemates. You often spend your days with them in rounds of live-action role-playing. You used to engage in various forms of more extreme role-playing with some of your other friends before you had an accident. You take an interest in justice, holding a particular fascination for orchestrating the demise of the wicked. You have taken up study of brutal Alternian law and surround yourself with legal books. You have no need for copies printed in troll braille because you can smell and taste the words. You hope one day to join the honorable ranks of the legislacerators. Your troll tag is Gallows Calibrator, and you speak with the new rules the blind prophets once used. 
You are presently the leader of the red team, poised to begin a mysterious game with five other friends in direct competition with another six of your friends comprising the blue team. What will you do? Therese, cut to the chase and begin LARPing immediately. I stopped using sugar in my tea, uh, because honey is a better natural alternative, at least in my opinion. And it adds more than just sweetness. But that's just me. I like honey. <clears throat> it's pretty hard to live action role play when there is no one uh, who is <clears throat> when there is no one who is alive nearby. But all of your scale mates are alive to you. At least you pretend to leave that to annoy people. You prepare a new campaign for one of your favorite scenarios: court block drama. His honorable tyranny presides. On trial is an especially detestable fellow, Senator Lemon Stout. You have sparred with a scumbag before. Tonight he faces justice. You will play the role of the prosecuting attorney. On Alternia, there is no such thing as a defense attorney. Or a defense. In a court block, the word defense itself is offensive. <laughs> Interrogate. <laughs> I love it. Most of the interrogation is in the intimidating silence. Slap him around a bit. <laughs> slap. Slap. You don't want to slap too hard. Enough to sting, but not to bruise. It must be methodical, businesslike and persistent. You only stop when you smell tears. <laughs> what the hell is this? Boy, how, this up to page 7,000? Mr. Senator, you smell very nice. Your luscious yellow scales are like the sweetest gumdrops to the prosecution's nose, but your deceit stinks. Did you honestly think you could dip your corpulent snout into the imperial beetle coffers like that and get away with it? Did you think your revolting abuse of the public trust would go unnoticed? Think again, good senator. While the prosecution may be blind, rest assured the League of Legis Lacerators sees all. What is this page? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> if you don't know the password yet, it means you're not supposed to, dummy. Go back. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Terezi, call a witness. How dare you? <laughs> Guys, let's not, let's not start sugar discourse in the chat. <laughs> oh, well played, Lemon Snout. Well played. The prosecution's key witness, murdered. How convenient. The court block has little choice to, but to acknowledge your cunning. You have earned just a teensy sliver of respect back. For now. But wait. Forget about the password pages for now? Okay, good to know. Oh my, what have we here? A shocking development. <laughs> the prosecution begs your pardon, dear senator, but you appear to have dropped something. A personal satchel, perhaps? Chock full of illicit embezzled beetles, with which you have the unmitigated cheek to waltz before his tyranny, concealed beneath your ill-gotten finery. The prosecute prosecution, excuse me, requests a short recess from his honorable tyranny so that all law-abiding and mother-grub-fearing citizens may go outside and puke. Sentence the criminal. <laughs> As the prosecutor, it is your job to reach a final verdict and sentence the reprehensible felon, while his tyranny watches in silence and submits grin appro grim approval. But you take pity on this miserable bureaucrat. You are feeling merciful. You will give him a fighting chance. You will flip a double-headed troll, Seeger, Seeger, Kager, to decide his fate. You do this quite often when making important decisions. Kind of like Batman's nemesis, Two-Face, or that guy from No Country for Old Men. It turns out there are a lot of badasses out there flipping coins, but those are Earth things and you've never heard of them. It's safe to say you borrowed this gimmick from one of the many, many troll things out there that's got uh, hard-boiled dudes flipping coins for major stakes. You base the habit on which everyone smells the most badass. Flip. <laughs> the coin tumbles through the air. Lemon Snout is sweating bullets. A favorable flip. The senator exhales in relief. <laughs> but what are you so happy about, Mr. Lemon Snout? He looks a bit confused. He quivers his lowly proboscis at the coin. See, the coin has exonerated him. Coin? What coin? Surely you jest, Mr. Senator. The prosecution sees no coin. She's blind, remember? Her. <laughs> this is so fucking dark. Oh. Trezzy, adjourn. Another, 
Another triumph for justice. The court block is adjourned. You offer final salutations to his tyranny in the customary manner. Okay, that's not customary at all. You're just kind of weird. <laughs> it's just that your red chalk is the most delicious chalk. You cannot get enough of it. Anyone who says there is a more delicious chalk out there is si uh, simply reeks of deceit. Ah, <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, throat coat tea. <laughs> you sure had to go a lot of trouble to do that. Go get Kane. You take your walking cane, which you use as a weapon kind of like Earth Daredevil, who who you've never heard of. You will use it to wallop enemies when you enter the medium. <laughs> wallop! Like this! <laughs> Begin recruiting red team members. Oh, it's smeared. Your nose begins scouring your chump roll through the saliva smears on your monitor for potential teammates so you can start playing. Hmm, no, not her. Nope, not her either. Definitely not that guy. Okay, how about this girl? You like to roleplay with her sometimes via chat. You pretend you are a member of the mysterious and noble mm, Dragonade race while she does her own goofy thing. You don't have it in your heart to tell her that your chat RPing is meant facetiously. I mean, facetiously. Troll AC. Gallows Calibrator began trolling Arsenic Catnip. GC lands on your whelping stoop and raps at your uh, cave with her noble and elegant talon, and once with her mighty snout for good measure. Oh, uh, what is, what is, what is, oh shit, what is that going to sound like? AC saunters from her ca dark cave a little bit sleepy from the recent kill. AC uses one of her mouths to lick the fresh blood off her paws, and the other one to blow you a kiss. GC with a mighty whisk of her mighty tail, uh, plucks the kiss out of the air mightily. GC pockets the kiss in her enchanted rucksack for later, to do something magical like make goblin wishes come true. Yes, AC finds that to be... The most, uh, a most admirable use of a kiss. She thinks that goblin wishes need to come true, uh, too, just like any other kind of person's wishes. AC begs your pardon while she rips apart this tasty beast to prepare a meal for her cubs. GC eyes the beast hungrily and mightily. Uh-oh. GC eyes the cubs hungrily and mightily. Especially mightily. Uh, don't you dare. I, I mean, AC shouts, don't you dare, indignantly. <clears throat> I, what did, what the fuck? Uh, I almost apologize. Nepa does sound like shit. But it is too late. He's a uh, GC scoops up a plump cub with her glistening majestic tail and flies off magically. The innocent cub is crying and crying and crying. AC says no and looks a bit crestfallen. AC gets a clever idea to slake the majestic dragon's mighty hunger. She prepares the lion's share of the slain armored gulper bear for GC. GC's magnificent curiosity has been perked. Is it a f uh, bull collar bear? Uh, she, oops, uh, she asked that. AC pauses a moment, uh, pauses a moment, and uh, nods knowingly with a couple of smug grins on her face. AC confirms it is indeed the bulliest of bears. GC instantly uh, loses interest in the puny cub and drops it to the ground far below. But as it happens, the really cute cub lands in a bush safe and sound. Whew. GC's alarming and splendiferous girth settles over the succulent collar bear steak. When she finishes the savory red meat, she lifts her proud, uh, wise head and opens her great big mouth and speaks the ancient tongue of a thousand wisdoms. She says, Hey, do you want to play a game with me? AC crinkles up her nose and prepares for a really unprecedented marathon of baffling feline obstinacy. Her dragon to D suitor will make neither rhyme nor reason of her per perplexing behavior for even an instant. No, no, that was a real question. Want to play a game? Oh. Uh, okay. If you mean a computer game, then yes, that sounds like fun. Okay, you can be on my team. A team? Team? Who else is playing? I haven't decided yet. A whole bunch of us in two teams. Oh. Well, it does sound like it will be a lot of fun, but I think I should get permission first. Blar! That's so stupid. He's not the boss of you. I know, but still, I'm kind of scared of him, and I think perhaps it's best to just run it by him first, so uh, first, so there isn't a kerfuffle about it or anything. This is stupid in such a terrible, uh, in such a ter terrible myriad of dumb ways. You shouldn't be afraid of anyone. You kill big animals with your bare hands. And in any case, he lives nowhere near you, so the whole thing is extra stupid. I know, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. I'll just mention it casually, uh, casually, and it'll be fine. I'm sure then we can play in just a little bit. Fine. In the meantime, I'll go round us more people to play. 
K. Troll TC. Excuse me. T, come to me. Wolverine. <laughs> Gallus Calibrator began trolling, terribly capricious. <laughs> you then proceed to have the rest of this conversation we already know. No luck in getting this guy to play with you right now either. Yes, that leaves. Say, so we have this conversation. Go ahead. Oh no, not Carcat. You were only going to ask him as a last resort. You wonder what he wants. <laughs> you will try to avoid mentioning the game. Hopefully he hasn't caught wind of it yet. Deal with Carcat. Uh, these two are the worst. <laughs> voice-wise, voice-wise. Carcinogeneticist began trolling Gallows Calibrator. Hey, guess what? Big news. Like, holy shit, stop the presses. This is a humongous deal. Sort of news. Ah, what is it? You're not the red team leader. That's me. I'm the leader. It's been decided on an official basis. Okay, so I guess I'm supposed to make a big stink about this and say, why, why, I want to be the leader. What? No. I mean, you can, but it won't do any good because I'm the leader and that's all there is to, evacu uh, to evacuate through your protein shoot on the matter. Well, it may surprise you mm, to know that I don't give a crap who gets to be the leader uh, uh, because unlike you, I actually have a fucking smidgen of maturity and self-respect. That's a lie. You're more of a melodrama spaz queen than me and you know it. And this uh, stuff you're saying is a pretend stunt. You're like a rocket-propelled spaz maggot spring-loaded up the ass of a psychedelic fucking freak-out weasel on, an, on idiot drugs. So let's uh, not make make-believe. Let's not play make-believe games here. Leader, me. Ugh. Carcat, I don't care. You can just be the stupid leader. I just want to play this game. Okay, great. If that's any consolation, I have selected you to be my second in command. Really? Swoon. Fuck you. Uh, fuck you. Offer rescinded. Okay, but seriously... I would have suggested you be the leader, but honestly, it comes with serious responsibilities, and I wasn't sure if you were up to it. How could you think that? I'm an incredible leader with all kinds of prioritization and command skills. I'm going to rock the cock off this weather vane, and the blue team will wish they were never slitted out of the mother grub's heinous, undulating asshole. So just give me the full briefing. What do you know? Okay, the thing you need to know is the leader starts out by running the client application. While the, or I, the lowly second officer, connects to you with the server while I remain generally in awe of your manly grandeur. And I sit at my computer doing mental, uh, menial chores in support of your heroic escapades, which, I hon which honestly I don't think you're ready for, but whatever. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I was made for. Being in charge of an adventure, running around and stuff, and fucking shit up like a goddamn hero with a uh, ripper wasp in his jock. Let's get cracking here. So, uh, launch your server, whatever. I'll install the hero program. The client. Yeah. Uh, T. Oh. Okay, if you insist. Far be it from me to stop you from being so dashing and courageous. And be perfectly honest, a little bit handsome. Yes, exactly. Now you're making sense. This is the kind of thing you, that sane people say. Keep at it. There's hope for you yet. Okay, I'll try. Anything to get you to stop being such a baby. What's a baby? Oh, it's like a mythical little pink monkey. Something that my loser dreams about. I thought you didn't have one. I don't. Yet. I'm not allowed to. Uh, why not? Why have you never mentioned this anyway? Honestly, ter uh, honestly, Teresa, it sounds like m more frothing loony block nonsense. If I ever did have one, it would mean the world was coming to an end. <clears throat> oh, thank God you just said something normal. I was starting to worry there. Whew, back in sane land. It's true. I don't completely understand it, but that's what, what it told me. We need to get you out of that fucking tree and into a proper goddamn lawn ring. You've been stunted living up there by the whispers of fucking bark gnomes or something. I think one of my neighbors was just cold recently. Maybe you could live there. No way. Screw lawn rings. More like yawn rings. I love my tree. But you're welcome to visit sometime. It's especially nice in the third autumn. Okay, well, speaking of that, I should go downstairs and deal with this grumpy customer. It's going to fondle a uh, major seed flap, but hopefully it'll be quick. You can establish your connection and do your trivial psychic stuff, I guess, in the meantime. Okay. You used to ship these two so hard. It was really heavily implied that they were meant to be shipped. Back in the day, but... Hey, what do you know? Does Carcat calm down? Because otherwise, that's a lot for Dave to deal with. <laughs> After the Night of Blood's heroic arrival to the land of Pulse and Haze, you quickly crafted a new weapon. Uh, home smell you later, plus some other cool stuff. Deal with Terezi. Boy, we really just jump ahead here. Carson Ogenez began trolling Gallo's Calibrator. You can see me, right? Tell me what is wrong with this picture. No, I can't see you, dumbass. Oh, yeah. 
Anyway, press your nose against your slobbery screen and tell me what is wrong with this picture. It smells pretty terrible. That's because you just took a hard drag of my load gaper, which for some reason I've discovered outside of this, on this little island. You mean your toilet? Well, ooh la la, excuse my disdain for your blue-blooded vernacular. What color is your blood? Whoa, none of your business. Seriously, what, what is that? Was that a serious question? Unbelievable. I will find out someday. What is with your obsession with colors? It's, a, it's bad enough you waste all my hard-earned grist rambling my hive around like that, not even in the direction of the fucking gate. But then you go and spend it on an ugly paint job. I killed a lot of imps for that grist. Carcat, please. Don't pretend you didn't enjoy going around killing things, and that you wouldn't enjoy killing a whole lot more. Prancing around with your little sickle being all adorable. Yeah, right. More like, adora bloodthirsty. I'm prancing on being that, okay? Anyway, this is awful. This is in, <laughs> this is no way for a leader to be treated. Uh, sorry, this is what you wanted. The leader is the first one in. This is what the leader is supposed to do. No, this is not anything except for what bullshit is. A leader shouldn't be at the mercy of the hive renovation whimsy of a psychotic blind girl. When do I get the chance to fuck up someone's hive? I should be the next one to connect to a client. No, you can't. You have to be the last one to connect to complete the chain. More lies. Think of it this way. I'm your server player, so priority has to be on me getting in the game, before I get killed by meteors, in which case you'd be screwed in there. Then the next guy comes in, then the next, and you bring the last one in. Whoa, wait, what? Meteors? What the fuck are you talking about? What does that have to do with meteors? Oh boy, you need to get with the program, Carcat. Have you talked to uh, AA? For, for what? Apocalypse Arisen. Uh, sorry. No, of course not. Or TA, or AG, I guess. Or CA? Really, there's like the whole conspiracy about this. Uh, as I'm finding out. Well, you don't, uh, just tell me. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you just tell me so I don't have to talk to any of those double-talking assholes? I can't. I gotta step out for uh, of the tree for a moment. When I come back, I'll, mm, I'll enter the game. See ya. A little while ago. Go drink some tea. Ugh, our leader, everybody. Yeah. Ugh. There she is. It's her. <laughs> Desecrate. You're not sure why you did that, really. There will probably turn out to be a reason. There's a reason for everything. Understanding this lets you be understanding this lets you be reckless, whoever you are. A little later. Somewhere else entirely. Rubbish from the land dwellers makes you sick, whoever you are. And later still. <laughs> We return to the land of Pulse and Haze, so that we can rewind a bit. Before all that paint got slopped on your hive, and before that mysterious hole was made. Man, how'd that hole get made? It was when Carcat ran TA's cursed ATH program and his computer blew up. That's what happened. We'll see this happen later. It'll be startling and unexpected. <laughs> Deal with crabby customer. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you go downstairs and confront your custodian, which is another term for a frightening beast known as, uh, a lucis naturae. Your losers had looked after you since you were very young in lieu of any biological parents, whom you have never known. No young troll knows, ever knows his or her blood parents, or uh, nor could such lineage ever be accurately traced. Adult trolls supply the genetic material to the filial pails carried by imperial drones and offer to the monstrous mother grub deep underground in the brooding caverns. She then combines all the gen genetic material into one diabolical incestuous slurry and lays hundreds of thousands of eggs at once. The eggs hatch into young larval trolls which wriggle about to locate a cozy stalactite from which to spin their cocoons. After they pupate, the young troll with his or her newfound limbs undergoes a series of dangerous trials. If they survive, they are chosen by a member of the di diverse and terrifying subterranean monster population native to Alternia. This creature becomes the troll's Lucis, and together they surface and choose a location to build a hive. The building process is facilitated by carpenter droids left on the planet to cater to the young, to the young, but only for building. They are on their own otherwise. The vast majority of adult trolls are off-planet, serving some role in the forces of ongoing Imperial conquest, besieging other star systems in the name of Alternian glory. The culture and civilization on the homeworld is maintained almost entirely by the young. Trolls sure are weird. Yeah, incestuous slurry is not a good phrase. In the slightest. <laughs> you leap into the domestic fray and attempt to uh, mollify your nannying aggressor. After a lot of kicking and fussing and gnashing of teeth and carapace, you just pull out a few chilled row cubes from the fridge to settle the beast down. Trolls and their custodians have a peculiar arrangement of codependence. The loose behaves as the lifelong bodyguard, caretaker, and visceral sort of mentor, while the young troll must learn to function as a sort of zookeeper. We decide to agree this conflict is not a 
uh, not a big enough deal to warrant a detailed examination of the action or an embedded musical accompaniment. We also agree that while that would have been pretty sweet, we also kind of in kind of a hurry here. But it would, uh, but if it were to be accompanied by something audible, it would probably sound something like this. We decide to listen to that track, close our eyes, and imagine what might have been. Wow, that sure was awesome. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> in fact, we are in such a hurry, you could almost say we need to get moving. On the double. <laughs> Dope, epic. What a, what a good flash. <laughs> yeah. There's this pretty cool dude, okay? Some people seem to think he's cool. Uh, sometimes. He guesses they're right. I mean, maybe. If they say so. Actually, you know what? They're right. This guy's dynamite lit in a box hot in a box of hot shit. Screw the haters. Anyway, he's standing around being all chill like cool dudes are known to do sometimes when they're not moping around or nursing migraines or whatever. A cool dude like this is, uh, probably has a real cool name, or at least a name that doesn't completely fucking suck. Like, at least not the kind of name that belongs to someone you'd want to just perpetually wail on. Maybe just a name that makes you cringe a little, but you guess you can deal with it if you've got to. It's just a guy's name. It's not like it really matters. Who cares? But he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too moody for that. In fact, this guy probably thinks you've got some attitude and probably doesn't want a damn thing to do with you. You can always try to guess his name, but instead of that, here's a better idea. Why don't you just fuck off and go to hell? Here, name is name this cookie, cookie broad instead. <laughs> okay, what's her name? Oh, wait, you've got to be kidding me. Looks like we're going back to the other guy again. All right, hang on. <laughs> It appears this cool and moody dude had a change of heart. He feels pretty bad about flying off the handle like that, as if shit wanted nothing to do with that handle. Shit would like to, to reconcile with the handle and perhaps seek marital counseling. So what's his name gonna be? Enter name. Your name is Solix Captor. You are apeshit bananas at computers, and you know all the codes. All of them. You are the unchallenged authority on uh, apiculture networking, and though all your friends recognize your unparalleled achievements as a totally sick hacker, you feel like you could be better. It's one of a number of things you sort of beat yourself up about it for no very good reason during sporadic and debilitating bipolar mood swings. You have a penchant for bif bifurcation in logic and in life. Your mutant mind is hounded by the psychic dreams of the imminently deceased. Your visions foretell of the planet's looming annihilation, and yet, unlike the typical sightless prophet of doom, you are gifted with vision twofold. For now. You have developed a new game, adapted via code parts from the runes and glyphs of an ancient underground temple. You believe this game to be the uh, salvation of your race, though you are not sure how yet. To ensure success, you will distribute the game to two teams of friends, a red team and a blue team. You will lead the latter group. Your troll tag is Twin Armageddon's, and you tend to speak with a bit of a lift. What will you do? Solux, equip throwing stars to strife specimens. Why would you do that? A high-level psionic has no use for any particular uh, specimens allocation. Fling stars specimens ward. You make short work of the specimens and, oh god, one of your bee house mainframes. The silicone was sliced clean through by your foolish maneuver. What were you thinking? The workers pair up and dance angry messages in their binary code. Binary code. Taste honey. <laughs> their eyes are in binary. That's awesome. No! You do not under any circumstance eat the mine honey. The consequences are highly unpleasant. You cultivate this honey for your losers. It helps him not to be such a complete idiot all the time. Merely most of the time instead. Calm those bees down. <laughs> Snap. Nap time. Get to work at computer. You are always up to your nook in the newest and hottest games. It is hard to walk around the place without squishing them. Whenever that happens, you are screwed and you have to grow a new one from scratch. Or just pirate it, you guess. But tonight is no night for games. Well, okay, it is. But just one game in particular. And this game is no joking matter. It is deliriously bug nasty. Recruit team leader. Drink some tea. Ah. Twin Armageddon's began trolling Gallows Calibrator. Teethy, you want to be the leader of one of the teams? You mean for your game to save the world? Yeah. Okay, I picked the red team. Okay, I didn't say anything about a red team or even that there were two teams, but fine. Obviously, you're going to set up red and blue teams. Come on. Uh, you don't know what I'm going to do. Stop being... Uh, uh, it's not being as though you can read my mind. It's not a power you have. Your strengths are being blind and tricking people to do stuff. And I guess being 
Jeffrey Savian, pretty decent at other stuff. But that's why I'm picking you and not some other fucking schlub from, <laughs> I'm not gonna read that word, row. And from idiot block row. Thanks for the follow, Astonished Perpetuum. That's a good name. Joy to become extremely astonished. <laughs> extremely astonished now. Good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <clears throat> Sonics, please. You are Mr. Appleberry Blast, and everyone knows those are your favorite flavors. Even though you type in yucky mustard, which is weird. Maybe there's more to me than you think. Maybe I'm not the two-trick hoofbeast you want to make me out as. Maybe I just want to give the red and blue thing a rest for a change and not make it so it's like, oh, look, it's that predictable fuck with those two stupid colors. It's amazing how everything fucking hate, how everyone fucking hates him. Maybe I'm more of the aubergine guy, plus whatever that putrid color is you, uh, is you type with. What is that, turquoise? Maybe it's making me turquoisey. Maybe uh, the name for that color is summer shithead myth. Have you considered that? But I'm sticking with red and blue, so maybe you should suck on it. Maybe, 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 maybe it's such a, it's a stupid word. Maybe that's the big, maybe we should all ponder tonight over some hot shut the hell up tea. So you think I'm savvy? Yeah, I think so. Pick out whoever you want for the red team and I'll lead the blue team. I'll send you the download soon. Talk to you later. Wait, maybe you should tell me more about the game first. How exactly are we saving the world? I don't know yet. I just know that I've seen it in my vision. Visions. That the world will end and our whole race dies and this is how we save it. And AA can back me up on this, though so don't be all doubting me about it. I'm not doubting you. I think you are right. Mostly. Mostly? What does that mean? Well, when you talk about how uh, you're going to die, too. Mm. I am going to die. I mean, we all are, but especially me. I'm going to die. Uh, mm, I'm going to get my ass served to me twofold. Double the service. Like two dudes on, the, on Double Butler Island, getting worked over by a Siamese twin Methuselahs. But before I die, I'm going to go blind like you. It has to happen like that. I'm not sure why, but I think it's like fulfilling some requirement for a true prophet of doom. In order to, for the vision, vision 2 to be right, that has to happen, and the universe will make sure it will. It's kind of like how a prophet earns his stripes. By being blind, like how an angel earns its wings. What's an angel? Some terrible mythical demon. What the fuck was that? With these awful feathery wings. Yikes! Paradox Faith uses them to usher in the end. How does it know what angel to use? Huh? So, yeah. We'll all die, but most especially me. End of story. Uh, but, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but how can I be totally sure about all that? How do you know some of the real visions you're having aren't getting some uh, kind of tangled up with the sort of the way you are about yourself? What do you mean? How you get mopey and you're always the victim of something and how something you think you suck, how something you think you suck when you really don't. Maybe that's clouding your vision? Okay, that's just some personal private emotional issues. Issues. And I'm dealing with that. And honestly, I'd appreciate you not always throwing it, that in my face every goddamn opportunity you get. Like, this is a big circus attack to you and, it, uh, and that is your special clown pie. See, God, so sensitive. Seriously. Talk to AA. She will corroborate everything. You and she are pretty tight, aren't you? Uh, not really anymore. She used to be a lot of fun, but now talking to her, I don't know. It just somehow always makes me sad. Okay, well, tonight's not about fun. This is serious. Deliriously so. We are in, uh, mm, what the fuck? Smirious shit stain city. Screw you and your shit stains. I will have a fucking blast and you can't stop me. Blue team, uh, blue team scum. Oh shit, it's on. Ah, uh, sucker. Sog's one of my favorite characters to voice. Boy, his quirk is a fucking pain to read. There she is. <laughs> that. Okay, that was completely meaningless. What was the point, whoever you are? Sog's deal with Apocalypse Arisen. Deal with. Apocalypse Arisen ha uh, began trolling twin Armageddons. Did you set up the teams? Still working on it, but yeah, more or less. We should all be playing soon. And I guess leaving this dimension? That is what happens, right? Yes. So I guess you should be pretty happy when we finally get out of here. I don't know about that. Oh. Will you at least be able to leave the voices behind? I don't know about that either. Isn't that kind of depressing? I thought they might stay with you until, uh, until you die? Not really. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with a lot of things. Even our inevitable failure. Though it will briefly masquerade as victory. Wow. Fuck. That was so much more depressing than, than the thing I just said. 
Dorothy was right. You were such a drag to talk to these days. She was right about a lot of things. Wow, what a mysterious thing to say. I am so intrigued. Do me a favor and spare me your spooky conundrums. Tonight, you're kind of pissing me off. But you like to talk to me. That is a fact, not a question. They told me. Oh, your sources have spoken. Relay a message for me. Tell them to go hop my huge creaking bone bulge. Why do you like to talk to me? Oh, I don't know, maybe because you were supposed to, be, to save the world together? I also talk to you because, it, in case you haven't noticed, I despise myself and perpet perpetually seek to duplicate through emotional pain the c cacophony of physical pain my hideous mutant brain causes me every day. Oh my god, I just had a breakthrough. Thank you so much for this. It was, a, it was great. That was a joke. Here, type ha. Ha. Now type it again. Ha. Oh, that joke was in the fucking pest request route. There you go. You're now officially, officially the life of the party. <laughs> I took an embarrassing video of you cutting loose there. Boy, I sure hope this juicy nugget doesn't wind up on the internet. Salix, I actually would like it if you were happy. Okay, thank you for saying so. You seem sad and angry all the time. What does anger feel like? I forgot. Have you ever been angry? I don't remember you getting angry about anything. Maybe I never was. I feel like I was, though. Once. Why do you ask Carcat? He's way angrier than me. For that matter, why don't you get on his his case about it instead of mine? I think his anger serves a greater purpose. It's part of his destiny, and thus ours. It will help him to sabotage his own designs, which are very much in opposition to the broader purpose, and will sow, sow the seeds of our failure. A failure which will ironically prove to be mission critical. If you think we're going to fail, why don't you get mad about it? At the voice of sending you down this blind alley the whole time. They never lied, though. This is how it had to be. I have to be totally honest, though at no point did I ever lie, but through omission, this game will not save the world. The fuck? And though it will still, uh, it is still very important, even in our defeat, unfortunately it is much closer to serving as the instrument of our people's demise than that of our salvation, and we twelve will behave simultaneously as the pawns and the orchestrators of the great undoing. I don't want to play anymore then. You will though. Fuck that, just watch. This shit is dusted. Check me out, all dusting it like a saucy fucking maid. It cannot be stopped. Meteors are en route. Are en route. You know this, Solix. Who cares? I'm making the great uh, the grub tube on this overpunctured bitch. I'm telling Red Team Leader to forget the whole thing. I'm quitting as Blue Team Leader. If you want to shampoo through the macabre fantasy of your solo, be my guest. You are never going to be Team Leader, though. Which is to say, the first to enter. Are you messing with me? You do realize I'm psychic, too. I could pull so much trippy shit out of my uh, spinal crevice. It'd make your head spin like like dervish in the fucking blender. So get off your high hoofbeast. I'm coming up. Huh? Up where? Hello? Oh, abort. Social finesse, yeah. Quirk is too good to read. Uh, it means you drive for second on screen. Change my fucking mind. Do you know what? That's a fair point. It really causes you to slow down. It's like, yeah, you really take your fucking time with this. Twin Armageddon's began trolling Gallows Calibrator. Hey, change of plan. We aren't playing this game anymore. You don't have to bother recruiting. Sorry to waste your time. I'm not team. I'm not the leader anymore. Cockhead is. He is? He threw a tantrum about it, so I let him be the red leader. Okay, that was fairly predictable, but that's fine. I'll talk to him about it. What's going on? Uh, nothing. This game sucks and AA is full of crap. I'm sorry about all this. Twin Ar Armageddon's began trolling Carcinogeneticist. Hey, change of plan. We aren't playing this game anymore. Hey, guess who the red leader is? I'm the leader. It's me. Your plan to cripple your rival team has failed. I know, she told me. I don't care. The game is bad news. It will cause the end of the world, not stop it. So forget it. Just go back to whatever you were doing. Writing your shitty code or whatever. Ha <laughs> So pathetic. This is yet another feeble attempt to weaken your opposition. Terezi and I have already established a connection and we are making great progress here. We are a great team and I am a fantastic leader. We will beat this game in no time while your team is clearly still asleep with the thorax. Oh god, no you idiot. I don't care about the game anymore. I just quit. I'm not playing. You should too. Amazing. You're either being really persistent with a transparent ruse, or you really are just that sad and incompetent. Uh, neither case deserves my respect or my friendship. In fact, you know what? Friendship cancel canceled. There, it's official. Bye-bye, friendship. Ugh. Carcat. Why? There goes the last of my team. And we got about half an hour left. They hit two hours. I, oh, like you haven't said that like a billion times. You aren't in, in any posi position position to question my competence. 
You're the worst programmer I've ever seen, and you don't uh, know anything about computers. Why do you bother? The only thing you're good at is yelling and making huge mistakes. And being ugly and horrible in every way and having stupid little nubby horns. To be honest, I don't see what's so great about your programming or hacking. What is a hacker even? Just some smug asshole in movies doing fake things and making up words. It's not even a real thing to be. To be. It's just some bullshit title you gave yourself so you can feel just a tiny bit less loathsome. Oh no, more childish burns. I don't have to prove anything to you. I'm a great hacker, period. No, it's all so clear now. You were a fraud all along. What does all this nonsensical code you wrote even do? It's all nonsense like a bluff. You just say, oh, Carcat. I'll never understand that I wrote his, uh, what I wrote is bullshit because he's so dumb and figured it out. Well, you're busted. These viruses here, I bet, do nothing at all. Wait, KK? I bet if I ran them, nothing would, would, bad would happen. Might even improve my computer's performance. No, don't. How about this idiotic program with a red and blue code? Which is a meaningless thing to do with code anyway. What does that even mean? It's another one of your scams. Why not sneak some bad clip art into the files too and pretend that's code? Oh god, no, don't run that. I'm furious. What would happen? I'm not sure, but it would be really, really bad if you ran it. Just don't. Ah ha! Just as I thought. You can't even come up with a good lie when I press you on it. Your bluff has been called. Compiling as we speak. It will auto run when it finishes. And now I have to go attend to something outside because Therese is doing something just unspeakably stupid right now. Whoops, forgot I said that. It was privileged information. You are the dumbest grub fucker on the planet, I swear. Later, douchebag. KK, no, do not run that code! Hello? Carcinogeneticist's computer exploded. Oh my god. <laughs> you are highly startled by the totally unexpected explosion. No crap, Dad! Karka and his friends and everyone they will ever meet thereafter would experience great misfortune on account of the curse unwittingly implemented through Sog's esoteric Mobius double reach around virus. Every troll's Lucis would soon die. All but one of their colonel sprites would be prototyped with a dead Lucis, each prior to entering the medium. Upon entry, they would each have a bittersweet reunion with the creature after the colonel hatched, triggering the sprite's metamorphosis. For the first time, the trolls would be able to have verbal conversations with their, custodi with their custodians, and would be guided by them along their journeys. Unfortunately, the underlings and warring royalty would gain the benefits of the monstrous prototypings as well. Each sprite, except for one, would only be prototyped once. The players would learn quickly that while one pre-entry prototyping per player was absolutely necessary for ultimate success, additional pre-entry prototypings merely empowered their enemies unnecessarily. <laughs> Angry shouting. Yeah. I'm going to save. I haven't saved in a while. Look! Oh! The game has no explicit rule that demands something dead for prototyping, but in practice, the Colonel Sprite has particular attraction to the deceased or the doomed, across every session ever played. Exceptions to this pattern are extremely rare. Solux, lament. Why did you send Karkat that code? It was such a bad idea. You suppose it was a boastful gesture to get a friend to think more highly of you. But why would flaunting your superior skills accomplish this? It was foolish. You ought to wipe all these clever viruses you wrote off your computer. They can only bring more trouble. Delete. While deleting your virus folders, you pause on one oddball file you have lying around. You did not write this virus. You copied it from an obscure server far beyond your planet's global network. This application is running on that server perpetually. It is an extremely simple ATH program. Its main loop is tied to the lifespan of the universe. When the universe dies, a mysterious auto pro or sub program will be executed. You have no way of knowing what that pro sub program does. It runs on a protected part of the server. It is completely unhackable. You delete the file, but it won't do much good. The program is already running elsewhere. Luckily, whatever harm it will do will not be done for many billions of years. And even then, what harm could a virus do after the expiration of the universe? This file always struck you as quite odd. But Solix, even with his wisdom twofold, does not have the, per the perceptual luxuries of our vision omnipresent. When executed, the subprogram will summon an indestructible demon into the re recently voided universe. This monstrous being with the power to travel through time is inconvenienced very little by his arrival upon the Great Undoing. He has the entire cadaver of the expired universe to pick apart at his whim, from its birth through its swelling maturity and tapering decay. In reality, he is known to have marked for predation, he will go about assembling followers through various epochs, even going as far as personally establishing the parameters for his future summoning. Solox couldn't know that the virus is essentially a formality. The demon is already here. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> Mumble and grr. <laughs> Grumble. That's what it has got him. Sounds of your losers is agitated about something up there. 
You already gave him his serving of honey today. If he thinks he can get more, well, that's just greedy. You wonder what could be bothering him. You keep your enormous bicyclops chained to the roof of your communal hive stem. It is the only place there is room for him. Dueling with him on the roof during feeding time is a daily ordeal. He is already here. Be the other girl. You are now one of the five other girls. It's Kanaya. Stop being the other girl. <laughs> you are now <laughs> no longer the other girl, or any of the other five for that matter. What's the name of this dude sitting in his four-wheel device? Enter name. Pupa Pan. Your name is Taros Nitrum. You are known to be heavily arrested by fairy tales and fantasy stories. You have an acute ability to commune with the many creatures of Alternia, a skill you have utilized to capture and train a great many. They are all your friends, as well as your warriors, which you pit in battle through a variety of related card and role-playing games. You used to engage in various forms of more extreme role-playing with some of your other friends before you had an accident. You like to engage in the noble practice of Alternian slam poetry, possibly the oldest, most revered, and certainly freshest art form in your planet's rich history. You have a profound fascination with the concept of flight and all lore surrounding the topic. You believe in fairies, even though they aren't real. Your troll tag is Audios Toreador, and you, uh, speak in a sort of, uh, faltering manner. What will you do? Cut to the chase and play card games immediately. <laughs> Pewf. You kickstart a rousing match at Fidu Spawn with the only friend you've got to play with, with in person. Your loyal loose is Tinkerbull. You take a look at your, the favorable hand you dealt yourself and crack a mischievous smile. With a host plush at the ready, you quickly lob a Ugana bomb and catch your adversary and catch your adversary off guard. Awful, absolutely horrible. Lunge. Ugh. Scuttle off. <laughs> Bulge. Nay. Horseroni, I choose you. Command faithful steed. Winnie. With a brooding Winnie, Horseroni shuffles his mighty hooves and makes short work of the fetus sucker, boost against vitals. Horseroni is now primed of rank for battle. Look out, Tinkerbull. Horseroni, spawn tech slumber buddies. Oh, this is awful. You use your awesome bestial communion abilities and bend the ferocious stallion to your whim. Tinkerbull can't stand the suspense. Nap time. Everybody wins. Horse Rooney gains a bunch of levels. In no time, he'll be ready to breed, and now you can put him out to stud. And you can put him out to stud. Good game, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Time to do some other stuff, you guess. Roll up your ramp. This is how you get up to your recruit raccoon when it's time to rest. It's kind of a production getting in and out. Hop in. You can't fit all, fit all the way in because of your huge horns. It makes it hard to get a, any solid shut-eye. Oh, great. Now you're covered in slime. Why did you do this? You're going to have to change your clothes. There goes another solid hour down the tubes. Ah, oh, damn. There goes your four-wheel device down the ramp. That happens a lot. Take Lance. After a major cleanup rigor and morale, and a lot of crawling around your wrist block, you equip your jousting Lance. Ugh. He's got blue in his. Interesting. It's a fucking windmill. Are you kidding me? It's a Don Quixote reference. <laughs> I didn't... Fucking hell, I didn't get that. You like to practice your jousting outside. One day you hope to prove yourself worthy of recruitment at the halls of the dreaded Imperial Caval Reapers. Assuming you are not slated for culling first on account of your disability. Or really any other arbitrary reason. Uh, admire posters. You wheel over to your favorite poster featuring Pupa Pan. Which is your favorite thing? You have always fantasized that one day intrepid pup young pup Pupa... I'm getting hungry, it's hard to read. Would come and take you away, and together you would fly to a beautiful paradise planet of legend that has all sorts of fanciful stuff like pirates, treasure, and a cruel villain with a missing arm and a missing eye, and these weird aliens called Indians. You have left your window open since you were very young, just in case Pupa stopped by one night and decided to splash a pinch of special stardust in your face. You have had this interest far prior to your accident. Being paralyzed isn't what made you be want to be able to fly. That would be dumb and would make no sense. Being paralyzed does sort of make you want to be able to walk, though. Way in the future. Over the course of your long journey, at one point, you were fitted with a cool pair of robo-legs. The guy who likes to build robots built them for you. But then, he does like to break them more than he likes to build them. It's usually why he builds them in the first place. Occasionally, though, he will uh, uh, allow philanthropy to override misanthropy. <laughs> Mithan- Mithan- Miss- Misanthropy. That's- 
difficult to read. <laughs> you were lucky enough to have a friend who didn't mind getting her hands dirty on account of your best interest. A friend with a chainsaw. The guy who likes to build Roas just stood there and watched. It would always make everyone uncomfortable whenever he would just stand there. And watch. And way back again. But before that, you had to scoot around in your wheel device throughout the various worlds of the medium, and endure all sorts of follies related to your disability, which, on account of their great plurality and marginal relevance, we will not get to see just as well. Wow, look what, uh, uh look what happens when you space out and contemplate the future like that. The messages start piling up. Deal with AG. Arachna's grip began trolling Audios Toreador. Tavros! Hey, red team is going to bite the dust. I know you're on the red team. And I know you're on the red team. Whoa, really? Yeah, you totally are. <clears throat> uh, my team's got no use for a boy that can't make no use of his legs. You are, uh, fated for a, a team of losers full of blind girls and lame boys and cranky imbeciles. Okay, you're probably right about that. But I shouldn't be talking to you. Oh? I promised I wouldn't talk to you anymore. What? You promised who? Rufio. OMG, who's that? I hate this guy already. Make your move tab, she's totally into you. <laughs> oh, it's her. He's, uh, okay. Someone said I should give my self-esteem a name and to be careful about what I say to make sure I don't hurt his feelings. Ha! <laughs> so he's imaginary, a fake, like a made-up friend, the way fairies are. Made-up, uh, made-up make-believe fake, fake fakes. Who told you to, make, to do something so fraudulent? G.A., but I don't know if she was joking about it. It might be a joke. Uh... I don't know, but I did anyway. Oh, man, what a meddler. I hate her meddling. Why is she always meddling? I don't know if it was a joke, but man. Uh, I don't think it was a joke. It was more like, okay, com uh, complete this analogy. Laughing is to, to a joke me as meddling is to... Uh, exactly. That's what, you, uh, that's what she did to you. It's worse than a joke. It's worse than anything you can do. Next time, tell her uh, to can it. That's what I do. But she keeps bugging me. Bugging and fussing and meddling. What's her deal? I guess it's flattering that she wants to talk to me so much, though. I guess I don't mind. It's cool. Anyway, Tavros, you've done you've been amazingly boring as usual, so I'm gonna go. Okay. This show needs to get on the freaking road. Believe it or not, the blue team doesn't have a single player in the session yet. Why well, you guys have like two or three or such? Unbelievable. I wonder what the holdup is. Oh well, let's face it. You guys get the head start. Uh. Okay. Anyway, good luck to you. It'll uh, just be like the old. It'll just be like old times. Adios, adios, Teresa Snore. Arachna's grip ceased trolling Audios Toreador. Bye. <laughs> Rap with TC. Terminally capricious began trolling Audios Toreador. Motherfuck, my brother. I'm so sorry. I kind of zoned out there. Hi. That's okay. I was expecting you to not be zoned out for any reason. So I guess I don't understand your apology. All right. Fuck yeah. It's all good anyway. I just zoned out when I was supposed to be all B to tell you you're all my team. Uh... Yeah, the red team, you mean. Shit, motherfucking yeah, my wicked motherfucker. Honk, honk, honk. Okay, that's great. I just heard about this from someone I don't want to talk about. Uh, but it still basically qualifies as good news. Honk, 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 honk. Haha, <laughs> fuck, you stole my fucking horns, bro. Or nose, bro. What guy even up with the gums to all fucking do that shit like that? Uh, I don't know, it's just kind of the obvious thing to do. Stick the circle in front of the dots and, uh, Behind the bendy one? Plus, oh yeah, my horns. <laughs> Maybe we can slam about it? Yeah, I can kick the shit out of some rhymes, bro. I'll stir up some fucking hell mirth and rip open a fucking bag of harsh whimsy. I think I'm going to stop sooner than I thought. I'll finish this cap, this, this pester lock. I'm getting hungry. It's hard to read. Yeah, you can talk about clown things, which I don't really understand ever. But that's okay, because I kind it's kind of funny. Whereas I'll address some topics pertaining to my interests and, I guess, personal motifs. Yeah! Fuck yeah! That how the shit's all usually up and fucking locked, bro. But first, here's the thing with the game. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about the Red Team game. Yeah, okay, if I remember right, this is how we're juggling this shit. Lots of fucking balls in the air. <laughs> Teresa connected to Carcat, so he's fucking chill. Then I'm supposed to connect... I lost it to her soon to get her all chill, too. But she's in the woods doing something. When she comes back, she starts playing. So in the mean motherfucking time, I'm supposed to get you to connect to me. But I fucking spaced out and forgot. Because I guess 
I was way too motherfucking chill up all this shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand. So just download this motherfucker I'm sending you so we can kick this bitch down the stairs. Okay, I'll do that, and in the meantime, shall I cue up the sick beats? Oh, brother, now you all fuck up and up and done it. You are fucking well deep, wheel deep in this big sloppy mask of pie topped with motherfucking whip rhyme. How strict are those beats at it, motherfucker? Well, I uh, turned up those bitches to pretty stern, set beats to lecture, and I'm kind of going hog wild on the curmudgeon knob, which I had recently installed. God damn, tell me more while I get my reach on for this frothy brew. Okay, imagine an array of beats that set limits. They got a rule book, it doesn't pay to skim it. Because there's a, a lot of latitude, they won't stand for any attitude, and crossing them's a habit you'd uh, not really want to get into because uh, they'd be pretty mad at you. Fuck! So fucking fresh. You need to be slap, slap fucking silly with a mouth like that. <laughs> and if you got a problem with it, then I suggest you go up and rap it, dude. Okay, I will. Just let me sneak up on this bottle of Fago and slap, snap its neck like a fucking last assassin. Okay, are the are those beats still chill? Uh, yeah. Are they motherfucking strict? Yeah. All right. Crack his motherfucking kick it. You both begin, or you both proceed to have one of the worst rap offs in the history of Paradox Space. And I feel on the verge. Uh, passing out. <laughs> Due to hugger. Dope, dope, dope. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. So we're going to call it there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hanging out while I continue this and we get into the trolls, motherfuckers. We're up to 2124. Fuck yeah. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe if you want to keep up with my stuff. We have videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Share it with your friends. Get them into Homestuck. The fandom needs people. Because it's been... Boy, it, I feel like Homestuck's been dying for years. And then it gets resurgences, like, every two, three years. It's incredible. And, uh... <sighs> comment! Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me think about Homestuck. What's your favorite troll? What, which of them is your favorite troll? And, uh... To click that bell. Ring it. Let you know his videos go live. Pretty consistent. But it doesn't help... Or it doesn't hurt to have a reminder every now and then. But anyway... Thank you for, for watching. Guy, thank you so much. I hope you have a good one. Everyone who hung out for the stream, thank you so much. And I hope you all have a wonderful week until we stream again. Until next time. Later, everybody.